Hello and welcome to this edition of the X Platform Cloud Kit video series. In this particular video, we're going to go over using YouTube playlist RSS feeds to construct an application rather quickly. So like with any video here, before we get started, we're going to want to head over to the github.com slash winappkits slash xplatformcloudkit page. And we're going to download the latest version of the X Platform Cloud Kit. I'm going to save this to my desktop. And we'll want to make sure that we have all of the prerequisites installed before doing this. These are all defined in the README document down here below. Um, today we'll be working with the Windows 8 and Windows Phone project. So we'll just wait here for this download to complete. And we're going to follow the instructions that are listed here in the Getting Started section. With our zip downloaded and the security scan running, I'm going to head on over to my desktop. We can see the zip file is here. I'm going to right click it and select properties. And this is very important. Click unblock and then apply. This will unblock any of the DLLs that are pre-built on the development machine before it's uploaded to GitHub. And otherwise you'll have problems attempting to run this solution on your machine. We're then going to right click and say extract all. And usually I'll change the name of where this is extracting to the name of the application I'm going to be building. In this particular case, this is going to be a Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess Strategy Guide. So I'm just going to extract this to a folder called Twilight Princess. Now the first thing we're going to do is double click on this folder, click through the X Platform Cloud Kit master folder, click through X Platform Cloud Kit, and then find the solution file. And we're going to double click this to open. If you do not have a Windows 8 developer license, it will prompt you for that. So what I'm going to do is click I agree here. and I will use my credentials to obtain a license. All that this requires is that you have a live ID. So the first thing I'm going to do is open up the appsettings.cs file in xplatformcloudkit.pcl. This is really where we'll make all the modifications to this template to kind of make it our own. Aside from if you want to do some visual changes or modify the XAML, you're on your own in those particular cases and you're more than welcome to extend this in any way you like. Um, however, most people will probably find that they'll just be working in this file. So I'm going to make a Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess game or app. So I'm going to change the application name here. I'm going to set the cache interval to 60 minutes. This means that new data will only be retrieved every hour. Otherwise, it'll load it from cache. This particular app will not be using Azure Mobile Services, so I'm going to set the Enable Azure Mobile Services to false and collapse this. RSS services, we will be using these. I'm going to comment out all the ones I won't be using. and we will not be using the local file service. So I'm going to go ahead and set that to false. 
All other items I'm going to leave as default. So let's go ahead and run this just to see what kind of data we get back. By default, our application should be pulling from this particular YouTube playlist, which these are kind of cryptic in the way that they're um, they're they're identified. They they use like a random string, so we can't really tell what is going to be in this content. But um, since I put it there, I know it's going to be some Candy Crush uh, strategy guide videos. So I'm going to go ahead and deploy this to my local machine. And you'll see my application name up at the top, and you'll see I've got some YouTube playlist videos. I'm going to just click one of these real quick. And you'll notice that the video for this content begins playing in my application. And it works also when I have it in snapped view, etc. So the big glaring problem here is I don't have any Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess content. So what I'm going to do is head on over to YouTube. And do a search for Legend of Zelda. And I'm going to click Filters here and select Playlists. You'll notice I get quite a few different Zelda playlists. Our particular one is going to be for Twilight Princess. So I want to try to find a really good source. And it looks like I've got one here. This is 82 videos for strategy. Maybe refine my search a little more. Here's a great one, uh, Twilight Princess walk through with 130 videos. So I'm going to go ahead and click this and if you note the URL it has a particular variable that says ampersand list equals PL etc etc. I'm going to go ahead and select this end portion the PL 7772B and I'm going to paste this into the YouTube playlist example. And we'll go ahead and relaunch our application. What? Now I still have all my Candy Crush videos, so what I'm going to need to do is refresh this. This is due to the 60 minute cache interval we set earlier. So I'm going to hit refresh. And you'll see now I've got my Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess videos. However, I do have an issue here that I don't have all of the videos. I actually only have the first 50. So the reason for this is that YouTube limits you from only being able to retrieve 50 results from a particular playlist. However, we can get all the videos by doing the following. I'm going to copy my original URL and paste it a couple of times. And I'm going to add a variable here called start index. You may wonder where I'm getting this from. And I will show you. All of the API examples that we have in the RSS feed section, if you go to the particular provider, you can usually find documentation about their API. So for example, YouTube's, I'm just going to do a quick search, YouTube API example. Just do a quick Bing search. You'll notice this brings me to uh, quite a few different links here, um, notably developers.google.com slash YouTube. Um, this will allow me to kind of look at the um, YouTube data API. I can click on some links here. Um, what I really want to do though is find something where I can test and see like what kind of variables they'll accept. 
and they have a playground. Usually find playgrounds for the APIs by perusing the internet. In this particular case, I know that it's something called GData YouTube. So gdata.youtube.com. And when we click here, we can see all sorts of different variables that we can enter in to construct parameters to add onto YouTube RSS calls. So for example, I have this result starting with. And what this will do is if I have, say, a playlist with over 50 items, I can get the first 50 and then maybe I could start from 51. So when I put these variables in here, you'll see that it has a start index equals 51, max results equals 50 here in the resulting URI. So you can play around in here, possibly find some new parameters to append to your um, YouTube RSS feeds and make them do some more specific things. But in our particular case, this is all we're going to need. And I'm going to go ahead and deploy this to the local machine and make sure that this gets me the intended results. So I should get like a, a total of 130 some odd videos. So I'm going to hit refresh again so that I can ensure that I get the proper data. And now I have a whole bunch more content. Now, there may be better ways of organizing this. For example, I have the walkthrough part one of six, three of six. Maybe I want to organize all of those into separate groups. Without going into too much detail, I'll show how to do that. For this particular group, we'll go ahead and call this one part one. Whoops, need to make sure my code isn't running. We'll then call this one part two. and then call this part three. Again, just for sake of time, I'm not going into complete detail here, but I may want to like put a certain part like, you know, the first dungeon or something like that, be a little bit more descriptive. And I'll go ahead and redeploy this. And we should be able to see more specifically what videos we're getting. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit refresh. And now I have the ability to use the semantic zoom and I can see I have all three parts. I have part one, part two, and part three. And this allows me to kind of organize my application a little bit better. Now one thing to note, since I changed the names, you'll notice when I click on a video here, it doesn't give us that full screen experience that we had before. It's actually loading the video on the right hand side. This is because this is needs to be configured in app settings. Very easy. Simply go in here, stop the debugger, and if you look down here in Windows 8 project options, there's a groups to display in full screen array. So I'm going to go in here and add the names of those particular groups that we want to display in full screen. I'm going to leave off part three just for this example and go ahead and deploy. And now when I click on an item in part one, you'll notice that the video loads in full screen, which may be something that you prefer. Um, then I can go over to part three and load a video here, and you'll notice that it still loads the old way over to the right because I haven't configured it to load full screen. Very simple configuration options there. So pretty cool stuff there with minor modifications we were able to create an application that is pretty relevant to someone playing the Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. They now have a full array of videos to walk them through the entire game. Now maybe we want to do a little bit more customization. Since we're talking about YouTube videos, I'm going to go over some of the YouTube video link options available in appsettings.cs. When I expand this, you'll see a couple options in here. Force YouTube videos to load full screen and autoplay YouTube videos. If I set the force YouTube videos to load full screen to false, which by default it will always be set to true when you pull this from GitHub. When set to false, instead of just seeing the video when, a, when you click on an item, you'll actually see the whole YouTube page including the 
suggested videos on the right and also the comments below. So this is just a preference thing. You may or may not want that in your application. And we've also got another option here called autoplay YouTube videos. And what this will do, by default it's always set to true. If I set this to false, what this will do is when I click on an item, rather than just going into the video and playing it, like before, it'll actually put up this screen that has a screenshot, also title and description that we have to click first before the video plays. So again, just a preference type of thing. So one of the other cool things here is that aside from having our assets built for this application, we've pretty much created our own Windows Phone app. So I'm going to go ahead and set that as the startup project and deploy this to the WXGA emulator. And we'll go ahead and see how our app settings have affected the Windows Phone 8 project. And if everything went well, we should see our application load up in the Windows Phone emulator showing the same exact data and being a very similar application. And of course the reason to use the WXGA emulator is it allows us to capture screenshots that can be scaled down to 720p or the WVGA so we can submit an application into the marketplace that has a single image that can then be scaled to multiple resolutions and I'll go over that in a later video. But you'll see with literally nothing I just deployed the application and I have the same data now in a Windows Phone application. I can go through parts 1, 2, and 3. Um, this is all coming from the configuration and the appsettings.cs file located in xplatformcloudkit.pcl. And it's really cool. I can actually click these and open up the video within the emulator itself, um, actually. And so this is really, really cool stuff. Um, so I've rather quickly built an application that consumes YouTube playlists feeds and displays them in an application and just waiting here I guess the network may be a little slow here um, but it will load this video up into the emulator there we go and I can click play and this will begin playing on my device very very cool and of course we get all the built-in features too that come with the template for example I can click the share this won't work in the emulator um, I can also cycle through my items etc um, very very cool so I hope that you find this video useful and I'd love to see people utilize this template in very creative ways. Again, this is just one of the ways to use the X-Platform CloudKit template. As you know, it does support a variety of other data services. For example, you can use Azure if you want to explore that route. Maybe have some data that you update on a regular basis, maybe daily or something like that. So when people launch the app, they can get latest updates for things maybe even um, use a local file so that you could have some common data that's always baked in without using the overhead of an Azure mobile service. Lots of cool things. I'd love to see people build some really cool stuff with this. And if you do, please feel free to get in contact with me at pdcarlo at microsoft.com. That's P-D-E-C-A-R-L-O at microsoft.com. And if you build something really cool, I'd love to get it showcased on the GitHub page for the project as you can see we've got a couple of cool projects the Street Fighter 2 and Starbucks menu that are featured there I would love to feature tons of cool applications and uh, get you guys promoted out there thanks a lot for watching I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, particular session and until next time keep coding